let's look at what we're doing through the lens of analysis of variance, which is all about group differences. In this case, what we're saying is, can we employ these predictors to predict the outcome? We've got this regression model, and right now we've got the outcome. One of the variables is our grouping variable, and the other is a continuous predictor. If we're going to take an analysis of variance perspective, we're going to focus on group differences in the means. That's what ANOVA is really about. Do these groups differ in their means on average? In this case, is there a group difference in the means, that is, by grouping by gender, on SAT scores? If that's the only thing we were considering, we would be doing an ANOVA, or actually it's a, it's a t-test, and what we've already seen is we could do this through regression using gender to predict SAT score. So if all we cared about was is there a group difference, that's all we would do. And then in ANOVA, somebody raises their hand in the back of the room and says, wait, it's not really gender, the grouping variable that you're paying attention to. Maybe there's another variable that really is driving things. Maybe there's another variable, high school GPA, that's related to the grouping variable, but also explains variance in the outcome. So is the group difference in the mean SAT scores that we see really about the difference in groups? Or is it really about the effect of high school GPA? So what is the main difference between our groups taking into account this other variable high school GPA? Again, the focus is on group differences. So we want to ask the question, what is the mean difference between the groups taking into account this other variable? Controlling for, above and beyond, or partialing out the effects of this other variable. So it's a NOVA focused in that it's about groups, but we're trying to say, what is the group difference taking into account this other variable? Here's the picture for that. This is a difference between groups, captured by the, the vertical distance here, but recognizes that there's another predictor. This, this conveys a difference between groups on average, understanding that there's another variable that also is related to the outcome. The coefficient that we have here for gender, where is it? Yeah, 55.70. This is not a raw difference in group means. This is an adjusted difference in group means. What do we mean by adjusted here? We mean this is the difference between groups after taking into account the effects of high school GPA. So ANOVA kind of starts by saying, what are the group differences in means? But somebody then waves their hand and says, well, it's not the grouping that really matters. It's this other variable, high school GPA. And if grouping is related to that, and that's related to the outcome, your understanding is, is clouded. So let's now answer the question, what is the difference between groups on average accounting for this other variable, high school GPA? That's what we've done so far. The coefficient is the modeled group difference or adjusted group difference. We know the groups might differ on the other predictor, and that other predictor is related to the outcome. So if we could remove or take into account the effect of high school GPA, then what's the remaining group difference? That's what this coefficient captures. I always like to think about it like there's somebody in the back of the room that says, you've left out something important. So if I say, hey, these two groups differ, somebody says, no, no, it's not the grouping that matters. It's this other thing. OK, well, let me get that other thing, in this case, high school GPA. Let me include that as a predictor in my model. And now the results for my grouping controls for those other variables. Let me give you another example, and we're going to look at this visually. Uh, suppose we're interested in adolescent substance use and how it varies between two groups. So adolescents whose parents are substance users and those 
adolescents whose parents are not substance users. I can think about it like this. Here's a model that says whether or not the person, the adolescent, how much they are a substance user is predicted by whether or not their parent is a user. That's the group membership. Is your parent, you're in the group that has parents who are substance users or a group whose parents are not substance users? And I might expect a, a story like this. The group whose parents are substance users tend to be higher on average than the group whose parents are not substance users. In this case, literally the slope, the model difference, is just the observed mean difference. There's no other, other variables taken into account. But you know what? We might suspect that adolescent substance use is also related to age. The older you are, the more likely we think you would be to use, to use any of these substances, rather than the younger you are. So it's not just are your parents users or not, it's also how old are you the adolescent. Okay. So this was our model before. Now we have to understand that there is this other variable, age. And so what we have is a relationship between the outcome, substance use, and the continuous predictor age for our two different groups. And these contours or these uh, ellipses are just supposed to mean like where is most of the data for that group. So I have a group here in red. These are the, the group whose parents are not users. And if you can see this regression line here for that group in red, this says the older you are, the more likely you are to use substances. Similarly, in the group here in blue, this is the group whose parents are users, we have the same trend. The older you are, the more likely you are to be a substance user. Notice that there is no association between group membership, that is blue or red, and age. This group, they have the same kind of distribution of age as this group. It's not like one of them tend to be older and the other is younger. It's the same in this plot. The model difference between groups, this coefficient B1, is literally the subtraction between these regression lines. And it's the same everywhere. You can see that. These are parallel. So it's literally the subtraction between these means. It still holds up. Now let's think of a situation where there is an association between group membership and age. The overall structure of this um, picture is the same, but notice now there's an association between what group you're in and your age. The older adolescents tend to be in the group that has parents who are users. The younger adolescents tend to be in the group that have parents who are not users. Our two predictors, group membership and age, are now correlated a little bit. We still have parallel lines. The difference here, B1, this model difference, is still quite literally the difference between the lines. Okay. This is the story if you're in the parents not user group. This is the story if you're in the parent user group. What's the difference is quite literally what's the gap between the lines. That's the group difference. But notice it's not the difference between means. If I were to say like how far away are the blue and the red values here, this is a bigger gap. Everyone see this on the vertical axis? The observed means differ by this much, but the model difference are a lot less. So you might say something like, oh look, the parent users, their substance use is much higher on average than the non-users. This is a big gap. But some of that is due to the age of the adolescent. Everyone see that this gap is smaller than this gap? That's the idea. Let's push this more extreme. We'll see what happens. This is now a huge difference between the groups in terms of age. Everybody in the parent users group is much older. Everybody in the parent non-user group 
tend to be younger. Here's the observed difference in means. So if I was just looking at the groups without factoring in the effects of age, I'd say, look, this is the difference between groups. But when I do this, what is the model difference in the difference between lines? There's no difference in lines here. It's the same line, actually. So this is someone where, in my first pass at this research, I say, hey, I've got a difference. The adolescents whose parents are drug users or substance users, they tend to use more than the adolescents whose parents are not. And somebody waves their hand in the back of the room and says, ah, uh -uh, it's not about the parents. It's about how old the adolescents are. What is the group difference after controlling for age? No difference. It's the same regression line. So here, it's all about the age and not in this case, the total, all of the effects are totally due to age. So if I'm an ANOVA person and I'm interested in the group difference, somebody's saying, no, it's not group membership, it's age, the other predictor that matters. If I just look at the raw data, there's a difference in the group means. But when I do this analysis that builds in this other predictor, I see that there is no group difference. The group difference I see mm -hmm. is due to it there being different ages of the participants. I say, oh, look, the, pa the adolescents whose parents aren't substance users, they tend to use substances much less. And you come back at me and say, that's because they're all younger. It's not what their parents are like. It's how old they are that matters. And if the data were like this, that's the conclusion we would reach. Another way to think about it is to say, these are all the younger kids, the younger adolescents. They all come, tend to come from one group. Let's say like the average age here is 12 in this group, just to pick a number. And the average age in this group is 17, right? These are the older participants. So what we're getting at with this adjusted group difference is to say, if we had 12-year-olds from each group, what would their difference be? And if we had 17-year-olds from each group, what would their difference be? They would be zero in this case. So when you have the adjusted difference, it's not looking at the group. It's always looking at the additional um, there or the other predictor? It's looking at the group controlling for taking into account the other predictor. So I come to you and I say, all the, the, the kids who, or the adolescents whose parents are not users, their substance use levels are a lot lower than the adolescents whose parents are users. Okay. That's the group difference I initially see. And then you say, but you have to control for age. It could be that it's not the, what their parents are like, but how old they are. And in this case, age completely explains the, the differences that we see. This might be like a silly question, but when when I conceptualize control, when you're controlling for a variable, you're just mm -hmm. leaving it fixed, like not fixed, but you're just you're not you're just holding it. Well, you're holding it in your model, so you're holding it in the model, but you're not. You're not what? I'm not changing the values in the yeah. data, right? But the comparison is to say. I would love to have 12, just to pick on like the number 12, I would love to have 12 year olds who are parents, who, whose parents are not users, and 12 year olds whose parents are users, and look at their difference. I see, so you're and, I'd, that. and I'd love to have 13 year olds whose parents are users and parents are not users. And I'd love to have 14 year olds whose parents are users and parents. At each, I would love to have that more direct comparison where they're the same on age, but they differ by group membership. That's not how the data are. In this case, group membership is related to age. So how do I, I don't have 12 year olds in both groups. So I need this statistical adjustment to say, what would the group difference be if the participants were the same on everything else, that is the same age, but just differed by group membership? In a case like this, We'd say, yeah, there's still some effect of, of group difference left over. 
In this, we'd actually wound up saying, wow, there's no group differences once we control for age. All the differences we see are due to the age variable.